Welcome to the Buildology Podcast. I'm Perry. I'm Randy. I'm Matt. I'm Justin. And we're going to help you become a Buildologist. Perry, Randy, Mac, and Justin have a combined 100 plus years of experience in the building and real estate industry. And now they bestow that experience to you to help you become is the Buildology Podcast. We've got building down to a science. I can't do it. Oh. We'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! This thing sucks! <laughs> okay. He gets a little off kilter. <laughs> yeah, he was... <laughs> <laughs> someone uh someone sent that to a gift to me the other day in my text messages <laughs> i think you saw it too someone sent it to you oh, yeah. also yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. someone someone sent it's it to stuff. me off there. well we're we are live so th- this is a uh, episode number seven of the buildology podcast so lucky seven lucky number seven lucky number seven so Welcome everyone out there in YouTube world and Facebook world. Um, so today we're going to be talking about what your builder won't tell you. Mm. Wait, in, what? Yep. What? I, what? I thought the topic was what the wife won't tell you. Oh, I no, zoomed right over here to learn what I didn't already know. <laughs> what, what, what you don't want to know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'll do what the builder won't tell you. Bye. Yeah. I there thought it go. was something else. Hands I, off that learned other topic. Something. Yeah, that other one. Uh, that I'm might, not touching that. I'm not topic. touching. No. I think we're all no. walking away from that topic. Well, I'll hear about that later. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, so I'm, I'm not sure. touching that. <laughs> I'm not touching that. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll bite on this one. So what is it that your builder will not tell you, Justin? Okay, so what your builder won't tell you is the truth that everything that you want to do in your custom home is probably not a good idea. That, you, that Everyone seems to be hesitant to tell the buyer. That everyone's so eager to please um, the buyer coming in uh, that some of the bad decisions that people want to do in a house that will actually cost them a bunch of money later on that super exotic thing that they want to install in the house that no one later on down the road is going to pay them for. Right. And I found if you educate people and Perry was kind of mentioning this earlier that, you know, sometimes you get people that just want to have what they want to have and they don't really care about the cost or the ramification earlier or or later. Um, But no one is sitting there telling them the, the truth. The kids do. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, kids it do. It depends on the generation of the buyer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. if they, if it's their final home and so forth, but they yeah. do need to consider that the children will be dealing with that situation at some point in time. Right. Yeah, right. do you know how many times I heard, this is my final home, mm-hmm. and then three years later, it's on the market. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's every, when, when someone buys a custom home, they're, this is our final home. No, it's not. (laughs) No, it's not. I can show you what your final home looks like. It's not this, not this pretty, not this big, not this hard to take care of. And grandkids can change that because they move away. Exactly. And they grow up and you're chasing people around the country. And, you know, when people say final home, that sounds great on paper. um, But someone needs to help walk them through that process. So let's let's talk about some examples of what would be a couple of things that are probably not good ideas. I think um, the best thing way to look at it does that item belong in the price range of home that you're putting it in. That's where I see in, the in, biggest mistake in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're if you're in let's say a half million dollar house, uh, does it have you know a whole wolf package of appliances in it? Probably not. Can you afford to do it? Probably so. Are you going to get that money back later? Probably not. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. The appraiser doesn't care. Right. He says, oh, he checks the box. It's got a range. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Well, I can give you a good example of something. I built a house for a gentleman from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And he wanted brick imported from Italy. Oh, real quick. That's not the guy that was texting in last week. Was it, no, it? No, it wasn't. Okay. No, it wasn't. But, <laughs> but he, he did. He, he, we imported brick from Italy. It took either eight to nine months to be received. It cost 10 times what the brick in the United mm-hmm. States cost. Mm-hmm. And it looked just like another brand of brick. Yeah. And he went out of his way to tell everybody that brick's imported from Italy. And he got no value on yeah. it at all yeah. from the appraiser. Yeah. A, yeah. a recent one that I had um, was 
there's a big craze out there to do black windows. And, uh, you know, there's a pretty big premium to do black windows. Sky and so, high right now. Yeah, so custom neighborhood wanted to do black windows. Um, you know, client was like, okay, I want to I want to do black windows. Well, here's the price. It's, you know, $35,000 extra to do it. Do you want to do it? Uh, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, can we do four? I'm like, well, you can't have four black windows on your house and the rest of them are white or <laughs> almond or tan. So that doesn't really work. It's kind of an all or nothing type of thing. You're, you can't just do four right that way. And so they ended up spending the money and in, in doing it. But knowing that they're never going to get that money, like the appraiser comes by and he says, yes, you have windows. And they all open and they function. And right. You can see through them. Yeah. No one cares. And, and, you that know, one, of the, one of the things you said earlier was that the builder is afraid to tell the buyer no. We're mm-hmm. try, we are known for trying to make the buyer happy to satisfy the buyer. True. But what you could do is give them alternatives. Mm-hmm. For example, I had a customer ask me this week, what if they didn't want, they only wanted a certain number of bathrooms or they had a part of the house that didn't have a bathroom in it. What you could do is plumb for that bathroom, have it in the foundation, have it in the walls, yeah. leave that room open so that if you converted that large game room, later to a bedroom with a bathroom, right. yeah. what you need is there. Right. And so you, yeah. can, you can think around, you can say, yeah. okay, this is, we can do this for you today, but as an option, think about the future. Yeah. Think about the next person moving in. They may not appreciate this 40 by 40 game room in the middle of the house. Right. Yeah, what, what I've seen is people make those decisions to do something, and then the reality of it is when they do turn around to uh, sell it, you can look custom home st- neighborhood statistics versus just traditional production, regular houses where people don't get to make those, you know, very distinct uh, differences and look at the days on the market. Days on the market in a custom home neighborhood is going to be longer than a production uh, home because a builder decided the floor plan. A builder said, hey, this is what most people want around this demographic and designed it for the majority of people. And then you get people that come in and want to customize it and say, okay, I want this odd number of bathrooms versus this odd number of bedrooms. And right. the market doesn't respond yeah. very well to that, and they wonder why they can't sell it. I got a, I got a good question for you, Justin. We know you're a huge fan of Tesla, everything uh-huh. Tesla, yep. right? Yep, okay. very huge. I have had so many people. In fact, people. I'm going up there. So uh, I bought tickets to the NASCAR race coming to um, Austin uh, track up there. I think it was like May 23rd or something like that. We're going to take a tour through the uh, old Tesla plant there and see what we can see Bring under some constructors. Bring back, would you? Well, I was going to see if they could see my truck being made up there. <laughs> I was going to see if they let me take the drone and fly the drone yeah. through well, the uh, factory While there you're there, spot look it. for some spots <laughs> to build things because they that, need that, housing over they there. Need, he needs housing over there just seriously. to support that plant. Yeah, yeah so when you yeah. build the largest factory in the world in, in kind of the backyard of texas right there i think that's going to bring some jobs of course it's going to bring some people and they're going to need some housing and that's one of the factors that we see going on in austin of (laughs) and the big question is is he going to have tesla shingles on that building oh that building's huge it's (laughs) It's when you can see it from space and the uh, the part that they're building right now is just a fraction of it um yeah Yeah. it's i i did get a i do follow elon in, in my uh Twitter thing, and he texted the other day of how many jobs um, that they were posting, and it was staggering of how many people that they need to uh, right. work at that right. Tesla factory, and they actually created a program for kids coming out of high school. He, he's what? he's really? a big proponent of not having a college education, is if you're eager and you want to work, and uh, he, he's right. eager to give people the, the yeah. opportunity, and uh, there's going to be some cool opportunities for young people. And well, we're, we can't wait to hear their report. I, I, it we'll should be there. cool. I want to see if anyone shoots my drone down. That's, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll be I wonder what if can. Elon built a custom home, if anyone would tell him no. Wow. Nah. Nah, of course not. Nah. Nah. And he, he wouldn't just, care. He He's, wouldn't care. So yeah. my question, let me float that question out to, uh, to you guys, that uh, my customers are coming up to me and saying, hey, you know, what about Tesla shingles? You know, is it worth the value right now? What, what do you guys think? I think I told you before that my builder over in Louisiana has been researching it, and he right. wants to do it. Yeah. He's talking about doing a community where the entire community is Tesla shingles. Yeah. And it's got some, I mean, there's some, there's some groundswell, I guess you might call it, some interest right. in that. 
Yeah, there's, that's a pretty interesting point um, with the topic that we're talking about. So the builder not telling you no, and then you're delivering something, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of cutting edge that the builder might not be aware of. So mm-hmm. that's a that's an interesting crossover, Mac, that, yeah. uh, you know, if you're not educated on the subject, the but builder... That, that still comes down to, you know, the question of uh, added costs fitting into yeah. where you're building. And yeah, you're not going to put it on I, a $200,000 house. I think you're coming down that road. The motivation is something totally different. It's not really that custom look. It's right. that functionality. Right. So that almost yeah. entertains a different... From a different stand, you know. Yeah, and that's almost an architectural uh, it, it style is. thing it because, um, you know, you could just if you were really just wanting to go off for the look, that's one option because you could just get a solar panel and do it smaller and yeah, achieve right. the same thing. So that well, solar shingle, they've got different styles of it, but you'd have to incorporate that into the design. Yeah, right? but when the customer comes to you and asks you, "Hey, can you tell me what it would cost to?" Do this entire home in treated lumber, which I got that once. Wow. Decking and everything. So, I mean, as a builder, <clears throat> I guess it doesn't cost anything to look that up and right. go, hey, what would it take? But those are the kinds of things you kind of go, man, yeah. that sounds really good, treated lumber in this climate yeah. and everything. But, uh, you know, that answer really needs to be, let's just do traditional. Yeah. You're going to get it back in your pocket when you anything sell behind the walls. Like yeah, you it, don't see you, that you don't see if you lay in bed at night and it makes you feel good that you have metal studs or Correct. treated walls or some weird off market building system. You know, you go into parts of the country and the, and certain things are more acceptable than other parts of the market and they make sense. But when you try to bring something not part of the market, yeah, well, I saw recently, I live down close to the water by NASA, and I saw a house being built out of cinder block mm-hmm. down by NASA. Yeah, yeah, right. Which is very common in Florida. You see it everywhere you go. Right. But here, you don't see that very often. Right. right. So what I question and what I wonder is, okay, what's the expertise of the labor? So the price is higher because the expertise isn't here, and there's yeah. not flooding the market. So they're paying mm-hmm. a premium. So when they go to sell that house, they're not going to get any of that back. Right. So you have to, as a buyer, really understand that you're, you're basically just buying something for your own mental satisfaction right. of it. You know, I kind of uh, relate it to a pool, right? You, you're never going to spend $100,000 on a pool and get $100,000 back when you sell the house, That's true. right? So you have to, the difference of your return versus what you paid is your enjoyment. So you have to look at that and say, is what value, you know, how much, if, if you never get into that pool, <laughs> that's a pretty poor investment. Well, what, what do you do if like a client comes in and, and they come in and say, hey, I want the entire house wired in 12-gauge versus 14-gauge copper. Oh, I'm like, glad you said everything. copper, not with my 12-gauge. Oh. No, it's a, and I don't own a 14-gauge. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but the, it's hard to every find once in a while for. you get someone who's extremely knowledgeable in electric, you know, the conductive factor of right. of copper and things like that, and they request a specific gauge of copper. The electrician yeah. doesn't carry it. They're not used to doing it. It adds a few more deals. I mean, is the extra money worth it to do things like that still behind the walls so i i would if if you were came to me and asked me that so i would turn around and answer the question with this like no one is ever going to pay you back for that true they they that is your so how important is it to you so when i give you the price for this premium thing that no one you know does the price is going to be really high because no one does it okay so when you decide to take that thing that no one does, does it make you sleep better at night? And I think that Mac will probably understand this the best, and that is the first question you should ask back is why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why is that right. important to you? Right. And then listen, because you never know. There may be something that happened right. in their life that caused them to want to do that. And right. if it's something they're emotionally attached to, their family is attached to, or whatever the case may be, or maybe right. they Or there are, could be a practical reason for it. It, it could yeah. make sense. And then with that, you follow up exactly what yeah. you said. Okay, I understand right. that. And it's important Good to point. you. And I'll try to deliver that to you, but understand this is what yeah. the ramifications may be with cost. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I've always, said, I've always told people that if you're going to add a feature and it's going to cost money, and it typically yeah. does, there better be some benefits to attach to that feature because yeah. if it's not brought up, if it's not mentioned, what's the point of having it? Well, here's the That's one, true. here's the comeback that buyers always come with. Uh, 
oh, the, they will like it because I'm doing it. The next person will value that because they don't have an understanding of real estate and how it works, right? They don't have a basis of knowledge. They just think that, you know, because I painted this room pink that the next person will like pink. No, they and, won't. But that is when you say, okay, and I understand that, and we'll be happy to do that for you, but understand that it's a gamble on your part. Right. You're taking a risk, and you may not get that return back. So as long as you know going in, that's yeah. what could happen. Right. But and that's, here's that's something that's easily correctable. And, and I mean, here's the price yeah. for repainting the house, right? Exactly. exactly. And so just exactly. take that in consideration when you list yeah. it. You know, yeah. here's the price of repainting that. Mm -hmm. And just is it enjoyable? And, and a lot of people it is. They're like, okay, I just want to do it, and it's in enjoyable for me because it's not just a financial decision it's home right. and so you ha always you have to point those factors out to people right. and draw that line so there's the financial decision and then there's home right so how much is home going to cost you because if you're trying to make a return on home that's a pretty poor investment yeah. if you're trying to make a return on a house that's different and painting painting a room is completely different than going into a neighborhood and you see you know 100 100 of the homes out of 120 have composition roofs yeah. on them, uh, architectural shingles, and then you've got 10 homes that have tile roofs. Right. And huge cost difference. Huge cost difference. And, and they'll never get their money they'll back. They'll never get their money back in that situation. It better be, you know, 80% yeah. uh, tile and, you know, 20%. It's got to be the other way. You know, same thing, metal roofs. You know, right. you go in there, you get the custom neighborhood and all of a sudden there's one house with a metal roof because he's like, ah, oh, it's a 50 year. Yes, it is a 50 year roof, but you're not going to be there for 50 years. So, <laughs> and, and there's alternatives again. You could say, what if we use it for as a highlighter? Yeah. Right. As an accent. Accent. Yeah. an accent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you yeah. highlight an area, right. accent an area that you like right. and you put a metal roof on that part yeah. of it. And then yeah. you've got kind of a blend. Right? Yeah. And that's where the builder, if he's doing his job, if he's on top of his game, he will give them options. Yeah, yeah. And just That's the key. Under, like you, we mentioned before, just understanding the client and where that motivation is coming from. Um, you know, we kind of start off by saying, you know, having the courage to tell them no, but you also have to understand your client, you understand your customer, mm -hmm. and that was your point, you know, understand yeah, where it's why. coming from. Ask them why and then just listen. Yeah. Listen to them listen. and let yeah. them tell you. And yeah. then, and then, when it doesn't make sense, tell them no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, I, like I, I can do it, but um, you know that, that's that's ultimately the challenge is if they want to do it, that that's great. But just preparing people to know that it's going to cost you um, this much money, and it's uh, what I find is it's like weird things that come up that are way outside of the the blue. And appliances are usually like easy to get over, like someone wanting to do an appliance. I mean, there's some things that, that value up, right? Of Like you've mentioned, like features and stuff. Um, one that I'm thinking of, though, is like design side when it comes to the floor plan. It, there, there's the one that people just don't understand right there. Uh, hey, I want to design this, you know, really specific room for this really specific thing. And I mean, if it can't be converted into a bedroom later... Well, that's the key, is the conversion factor or the conversion availability at a later date. And right. as a builder, we should be able to say, we can do this, but keep this in mind. The next person coming in may not need to store a baby grand piano in the middle of the family room. Right. And Another one was like sunrooms, a little eight-foot area in the back of a family room. What was a sun? Like, what are you? What furniture are you putting in there again? <laughs> like and, and you know, a bunch of square footage that added cost yeah. that they don't even, you know, you might have had furniture for it, but no one else is going to have furniture for that. I've got I've got a question for Randy and for you because okay. you guys have built and you guys know what you know what costs are and values are. Question I get that comes up all the time is if I go with a two story over a one story, will my cost be lower? Yeah, the, how, do you, that, how do you qualify that one? Okay, so this is how I qualify it. That's a really complex one because everyone comes in going, "Oh, the two story is going to be cheaper." Right. Well. It really comes down to the pure design of it. If you got into a production environment where the builder controlled the design, right. not the homeowner. Okay, so the homeowner is going to do some unfair balance of square footage. They're going to put like one room and one bathroom up there and go, I need a game room with a bathroom up there. And so now as the builder, you have to build a set of stairs, which takes up a lot of square footage in a, in a floor plan, right? and get some very small fraction of square footage up there. 
So the balance of the square footage doesn't line up of how much is up versus how much. You right. didn't eliminate enough foundation. You right. didn't eliminate enough. There wasn't enough eliminated out of it to recoup the efficiencies of doing it. Now, if you got into a production neighborhood and stacked walls on top of walls, built a box, built a box, yep. okay, Thank and you. tucked a bunch of square footage under the one roof, okay. But uh, Randy and I had this decision or discussion, man, two months ago. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, where I said this might be the first time where even in a production environment, it might cost more to build a two story than a one story. Yeah, that's true. That was the last uh, what. what what and the reason that's because the lumber's so expensive, yeah. Yeah. right? So to pour yeah. concrete at this point, right, is cheaper than framing a second floor. The eye joists and the trusses and all the lumber right now, you know, it, just for roundabout numbers, it's, let's say it's a slab is, you know, 7 to $8 a square foot for a slab. You know, right. you can get less, you can get more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so th- let's just throw a number out there, $7 a square foot the second floor up there is going to be in the 10 to $12 a square foot for the, just for the lumber, the, the decking. We used to be able to spend $39 for a sheet of subfloor. It's like 80, 90 bucks now for a, a sheet of subfloor. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention the trussing. You know, I there. never thought of that, but you could be right because right. Yeah. So we've this always is, said that slabs are the most expensive thing. Right. right. But now you frame it. Relationship this is, is totally changed. And that that's literally in the last six months. And uh, we were looking at it. I was like, this might be the first time ever that a two story production yeah. home, it's more efficient to build the one story just because right. the slab might well, be think cheaper. about with i mean with t- in today's world with lumber being where it is and once again yesterday it broke the record again yeah, as right. far as thousand board foot where is it now it's, the it's last like time i looked it was a thousand, thousand forty four yeah or crazy. thousand board foot yeah it's um, crazy but think about it so with lumber being where it is and then putting a floor on top of a floor it, obviously, the, the builder, if they got the wherewithal, is going to really push toward putting walls on top of walls and trying to, you know, lighten the load going down to right. the foundation. But when you get into floor systems, it, and no one really uses two by twelves or two by sixteens yeah. anymore, you're doing you're using something engineered, right. yeah. eye joists, yep. trusses, yep. something along those lines. Well, wood being where it is, and then you add the cost of engineering on top of that. To yeah, that, pro- that becomes. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a I mean, major, it's an major expensive cost. just and, to, and that's just under your feet and above your head. And exactly. That's all it People is. People never calculate this, the, a huge the stair, experience. like how much square footage it takes when you're designing it a house. It takes a huge chunk. A big area and what incorporating a set of stairs into design. I know, mean, last, time, last time, last time you and I talked about that, I think to get the proper rise and run on the staircase, just to get upstairs, yeah. even if you're putting one little room up there, yeah, you're basically it's like 120 square feet. Yeah, you're basically if you curve it around of the effect on the house of what you're doing. So in a custom house, it's like, do I take another bedroom or do I try to cram the stairs in there? And as far as what the square footage is right. impact is just to get to another room. I'm like, you'd be better off not doing the stairs and just adding, just adding, a adding, adding, four, adding, adding yeah. <laughs> four foot to the, <laughs> and you don't have to add another hallway to get to the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. Not to mention a lot of those situations, right. they want that to overlook like into the family room while they're right. into there. And then now you're doing balloon framing at the right. back of the house yeah. and, and all just kinds crazy of crazy stuff. stuff. And, yeah. Which once again, People want what they want. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to sound like we're really discouraging people from getting what they want, but it's it it's when you come back to let's see who was a you were just talking before this. People don't understand why the prices are going up so much on the custom home side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it naturally is going up because of what's happening in the market. But when you start adding those requests on top of the mark, the pricing yeah. already going right. up. And then it, they come back and they don't understand why it costs so much more money. Right. And then you're back to explaining what right. it is when it could just be, let's really talk about what you're asking. It's yeah. cool. We'll put it in, but let's understand what we're asking right. here right. And, and go through the motions and price it out and, you know, scale it and put some numbers to what you're actually trying to do. And it, it you know, it, it, it's like you're buying at the height of the market. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. if you sell that home five years from now, well, that's probably not the height of the lumber market then it's going to be priced at where new homes are being built next to it at that time. So it's just a lot of things to consider. Yeah. Can you right. imagine like that at this 
if you were to price out um, someone wanting to do a deck on the back of their house versus concrete at this point, concrete win all day long. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be day long. <laughs> all day long, right? Especially yeah. if it's so, on the ground and you're doing right. direct contact. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> like all day long, yeah. right? So I used to get that all the time about doing a deck and stuff. And if the prices lumber are like, forget that idea. No. Yeah, don't do not do a deck. You'll, you'll definitely be wasting a bunch it's, of money. It's now you know. everyone wants to do those cedar trellises it, and, you know, yeah. on big lookouts and stuff on the back. Yeah. It's like, well, why don't we... Use something else and we'll paint it to look amazing yeah, exactly. because it's going to be about two thirds. Not less. to mention when it rots later and you tear it out, you're like, Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's ooh. right. Yeah, well, cedar will do Houston, that. Texas I've had a couple of people that have had absolute sticker shock when they started pricing fencing. It's oh, six yeah. foot cedar oh, yeah. pickets yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting, does getting anybody, nuts. Does anybody have a gut on how long they expect this to, this to last? I get asked this all the time. So that forecast looked like after summer, yeah. it, it trended back down. So yeah. it looks like it's in a peak in summer, which is traditional. That's and normal. Our, that's that's normal, normal, right? But is the forecast taking in just normal because it's based on historical, right? And so the forecast... And, this isn't these this, are his, these are historical times right not right. based upon but history. not based on history right. so that's where i just kind of question is like the number when i look at that forecast it, and how it peaks over the summer and comes back down you could have, you could throw any year in there and, and the graph would look the same like It'd it still would peak be the and same. fall right I the will, price would be way lower but it would still do the same thing correct and i'll share something with you one of the huh. customers i'm working with right now he's actually a chemical salesman and Said that chemicals, especially formaldehyde, these the cost of these chemicals oh, are at some of that. all time. <laughs> Let me know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he, just, the, he said he said that they've got some very high paid, highly paid uh, analysts that forecast you know pricing, and said just these guys are amazingly accurate, and they're predicting that now that the vaccine's coming out, yeah. Said a lot of these plants that have been offline or down to very much reduced uh, production capacity will be coming back up probably by August. And he said by October, November, December, fourth quarter, twenty one, we should see. see Which would go along with that forecast. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Now I'd heard something as long as we're just talking about what we hear, and y'all may have heard this too. Some I've never heard before anything. So we're all familiar with radiant barrier roof decking, Right. right? You know, the silver paper on the back mm-hmm. reflects the heat out. Okay, so the glue that's used to attach that foil to the lumber is made by one specific company. Oh, no, I know where you're going that with this That product one. is <clears throat> used in that. It's used to put carpet together. It's used in PVC glue. Yeah, I actually that, buy that right now, and you can't get it. No, because yeah. it's offline. Yeah. That company uh-huh. went offline for an indefinite period of time, So, and that stuff's not being produced. Right. No. So... Yesterday, I got a delivery of roof decking, and we're using radiant barrier mixed in with it. Was the fire retardant four by eight? Oh, really? The stuff you use only on specific situations and yeah. parapet walls and stuff. Yeah, they're substituting that. Oh, wow! And it is thirty percent more expensive than oh, expensive wow. roof deck right now. Mm. I'm expecting just to see OSB come out with no. Yeah, uh, we we ran into that on the substitute. on the cabinets that we use a um, we were using a single part glue when we. Um, when we wrap the uh, vinyl on the doors. And uh, so I, I called the supplier to get some more of that. And he told me, he was like, oh, no, you can't get that. And I was like, what do, what do you mean you can't get it? He's like, no, 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 I, that, it doesn't exist in the market. You can't get it anymore. I was like, what is that stuff made out of? And apparently it was fairy dust, I think. Is, yes. is, was the, it sounds like it. <laughs> it was because it doesn't exist anymore. Uni- unicorn horns. It was unicorn <laughs> horns and fairy dust because it, now it doesn't sudden, exist. I was like, well, what am I supposed to use? And he was like, well, you have to use this two-part glue now. And I was like, two-part? I don't want to use two-part. That no sounds like twice the work. <laughs> that sounds twice the work. It's an Elmer's paste. Or well, yeah. all, all of these things that you're speaking of, it, it's a ripple effect. It's going to yeah. happen now. And how many years will it take for all of that to be taken care of? Oh, yeah. It's gonna be, we, we will be paying for this for yeah. a long, long, yeah. long, 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 long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, it's you know, eventually sometime the market starts to make adjustments on its own. And you're hearing more builders and people talking about metal versus wood and uh, light, light gauge structural for outside walls. I've right. heard that being tossed around now. Right. So if it gets into a certain point, 
the market will start to correct and start using, yeah. they'll start adopting other materials and methods and procedures and things like that. And that'll you know, take maybe, some, maybe some it was pressure that, off supply. Yeah, it will, yeah, a little you know, bit. Yeah, maybe yeah. that cinder block home that I saw won't be so rare in the future. Right. That's one thing you In our market, I mean, yeah. it really makes sense when you think about it. Right. Yeah. If, you can, if you can work with a CMU designed home and, it, and it's different in aesthetics compared to a wood frame home, uh, you know, CMU is not short supply. So, yeah. you know, yeah, it you could, could be one thing it. to look at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just really the trade base here. You know, like you said, you go out in Florida, that's just the way that it's, it's the way done. it works. You see it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You see it everywhere. Yeah. So, but it's still been used. You think of every monument that gets built, and, you know, yeah. in, in communities and new shot, they're, they're built with CMUs and yeah. then faced with whatever. Right. So, yeah. right. it is out there. They just had that labor yeah. market just has to grow. Right. Yeah. I mean, if the prices continue to rise, and the forecast isn't wrong or is wrong that it's not coming back down, it continues to rise, I think you will see a ton of alternatives because wood, it, as it gets more expensive. Now, I, you kind of reminded me, I, I read an article last week um, that the United States is going to Canada and trying to get supply back from Canada um, as far as the lumber. Yeah. So in the last four years, we you know, blew that relationship up with Canada as far as the lumber supply. And that's one of the problems. So um, as they open the doors, trying to get some Canadian wood back in here, um, more supply would help. So more supply, that would help the price. So well, the, that's in, a, the interesting thing I heard this past week, though, was that um, an individual that owns a considerable amount of prime yellow pine hmm. forest in East right. Texas. Yeah offered it up to one of the local mills, and they weren't interested. Huh. And they said, we're down at 25% production right now. And hey, you're making me think i got a bunch of trees out here. I need to get rid of these <laughs> things. <laughs> they just they, they guard it. Make sure they're still yeah. out there when well, we you've, finish. you've got some trees, and you have a sawmill. So I have a sawmill and work. trees. That's a pretty good mm. combination Yeah, right that's a pretty, tr- <laughs> pretty good combination. You just can't do anything unless you wear red plaid with suspenders that's or something. It. Yeah. That's it. I have a special uniform that I wear when I, when I sawmill, you know. That's a, <laughs> a customer sent me a picture of a Brink truck today and said, these are the new lumber trucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'll tell you. I used to tell my wife all the time, that was my favorite vehicle was those Brink trucks. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we were having some problems with theft on, on one of my projects and we, you know, pulled the trigger and installed some live cameras and it's monitored and just that has pretty much stopped it. Like, because yeah. the visual is just too hard now because it is being monitored 24 seven. Right. Yeah, and now they've just gone off and found an easier target, so it stopped my problem. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So we we went this whole episode, and we have not discussed why there's a bat on the table. I know. I was. I want to say what the what what someone won't tell it. us is why there's a bat on the table. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's baseball season. I oh, mean, okay. Oh, it is. So, okay. Yeah. So if you go back one week from tomorrow, it was opening day. Okay. And. One of the things that Mac and I have kind of tossed back and forth is we talk about getting involved in your home and whether it's a realtor, whether it's a salesperson, whether it's a buyer, is you have to do your homework. You have to go, you have to put in your time, boots on the grounds, as we call it in Texas, or as I call it, swing the bat. What do they say in other states? We say boots on the ground. I don't know what they say. I do they, do they say loafers Texas? on the ground or in Florida, sneakers? Florida, it's uh, sandals on the sand. Sandals on the there sand. Okay. But, hey, but. Okay, go ahead. So what I was going to say is that is when I used to coach baseball, I would tell the kids, and we actually had shirts made that said, you are guaranteed to miss 100% of the balls you don't swing at. Yeah, that's true. So the, the moral yeah. of the story is swing the bat. Now, you're going you're gonna to strike out sometimes, but you're going to get another at bat. But if you don't ever swing the bat, if you don't try, if you don't price your house at a certain market, you don't know until you try. If you don't go look for that specific item you want. Yeah. You got to swing the bat. Well, than, no, that's a that's actually really better good. Better than my message of hit don't, the balls. Don't pass up your opportunity <laughs> to do some bragging rights on this bat. Why? Well, what specifically? Yeah. Why is this bat here? And whose bat what is that? What makes that, that bat special? Okay. What makes that bat so special? It, it is a bat with my son's name on it, Kyle, yeah. and he did play with the Cincinnati Reds. For that's right. Summer, yeah. And it's a pro model bat, but that wasn't the reason I brought it. Up. <laughs> I know that. Uh, <laughs> come but on, if you're you bringing, it up, hey, so. you're a professional baseball player, son. You need to say that. Although. Now he's a doctor, so yeah. I mean, that yeah. was his fallback. He became a doctor. So. Well, that's a pretty that. good fallback. <laughs> it is. Both of those. That's a pretty big uh, 
pretty big fallback. And Perry, he's going to keep the bat, and he may need to keep us in line with the bat. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Right. that's it. That's right. Yeah. That's Somebody it. talks too much, then we will swing <laughs> yeah, the bat. We will swing the bat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what show was that in? Uh, the sign or something. Swing away. <laughs> oh, that was in signs. Signs, signs. Sign. Yeah, that yeah. was it. Okay, yeah. guys. Well, that was a fantastic episode. You know, the cat stayed again. The cat's. Uh, He's here. We got the bat. Now, did you did Perry introduce show and tell to the show? So every week we have show and tell. Well, you may have started be. a trend. Because I know last week Randy tried to bring show and tell, and I think someone stole it or something. Yeah, they, yeah. someone took the sign out of the right of way on the highway. That's what it takes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so the county beat me to it. So if that was your sign out there, uh, they, yeah. they probably saved you some money. So <laughs> there you right. go. There well, you go. We may have props in the future. Yeah. That may props, not be in the future. props in the future. They props could be fun. In the future. They could be fun. Although and looking at that, the bat looks good on the table so yeah i think props are yeah yeah, yeah pr- props yeah. are a positive thing yeah. so very good guys well uh episode seven shortly in the can we appreciate everyone tuning in um and we will see you same bat time next week same bat time. <laughs> <laughs> bat game, right? i still want to know what my the wife won't tell you though so oh yeah, yeah yeah we'll have to discuss that one we're off still here not touching that. we're not touching no, when that i get right home now. i'm probably going to get told it's not told me, so it's she's going to want to borrow the bat <laughs> right <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. all right everybody have a profitable week absolutely yeah. absolutely all right great job guys